So now I'm going to come towards and show you guys a bride that wants to be slightly more experimental. She's wearing red but she doesn't want to do the conventional look. So how would we approach it where the hair is concerned? As you can see already the front looks nice and messy. It's a very textured kind of hairdo. So I want to do a very fun uh, almost a burgundy red eye on her. We're going to have a little bit of a green accent because that's in her jewelry and her dupatta and we're going to do like a nude lip on her face. So she already had one look done on her so I'm going to wipe the face clean now I'm going to go ahead and take my neogen green tea um, gauze peeling pads and I'm going to add some pixie glow tonic to it so I'm going to kind of scrub this on her face very gently to give her slight exfoliation so again this is great to prep the skin I'm just going in circular motions making sure that her skin is nice and prepped. This has a little bit of a texture, the pad itself, so it acts like a great exfoliator. I'm going to take it down to her chest and neck as well. So now I'm going to take the Glam Glow Water Burst Hydrated Glow Moisturizer and I'm going to apply that all over her face, chest and neck. I'm going to let this stay on her skin while we start her eyes and I'm going to take a baby wipe with some Bioderma Sensibio on it. I'm just wiping her eyebrow and just the corner of her eye to make sure that when we apply makeup there, there's no contact with that moisturizer. And now I'm going to go in with my medium beige tart shape tape and the NW40 and I'm going to blend them together with Sephora's number 80 brush. Like all of you know, I prefer using concealers as color correctors as opposed to actual color correctors because I see I feel most people use too much of the orange and then sometimes it's very hard to blend. I also feel mostly uh, so much color correction is not even required. And I'm using an NW because that has a more red pinkish tone also it has a more peachy orange when it actually gets darker so that's great to neutralize a lot of the discoloration we have around these areas I'm just going to now apply just the medium beige on top of this layer onto her upper eyelid just dab 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 no wiping or swiping now I'm just going to take an eyebrow brush and just brush her brows I'm not going to touch them till later I'm just brushing them up she already has a nice thick brow so won't require much filling in but I'm just brushing them in and I'm going to fill them in towards the end now I'm going to go in with my dip down which is a brown a gel eyeliner that's more brown and I'm going to take it on my hand here I'm just taking a mini shader by Morphe and I'm going to apply it inside her eye in the corners also on top and then on the top waterline as well add some dip down on that I'm just blending it on my hand and I'm also going to start smoking out her lower lash line with this Now using a blending brush, I'm going to take some of this fluid line on that. I'm kind of wiping it on my hand before I take it straight to the eye. I'm going to also blend this all over her. And as you all know, I love using these as the base because they hold my colors really well, make sure that the eyeshadow is not going to crease. So I'm keeping it to the socket, I'm not dragging it slightly higher up. I want that transition color to be more warm and almost red-like. So the motion again is circular or back and forth, circular or back and forth. Now I'm going to take this color from Mohave by NARS. 
and I'm kind of going to just go in a semi-circle in her crease and add this color. I'm using it to kind of blend out this dip down towards the edges and adding like a metallic shadow there is going to make it easier for me to blend other shadows on top so it's a very soft metallic color in the crease so in a semi-circle like I said making sure that that almost where the crease meets this dip down that we've applied everything should be nice and blended so now I'm going to take the Huda Beauty Warm Up Sessions palette and I'm going to use this red almost like a burgundy red here and I'm using my 10S brush by Inglot and I'm going to start layering this color in the lower lash line right and I'm going to add the same color into her crease also now I'm going to start making this area also slowly drawing into this area and making it look slightly more reddish as well so we're going to build the color slowly using a MAC blending brush now eye blending brush I'm just pulling the eye ever so gently on top and then back and forth now I'm going to go back in with the darker color here it's like a darker brown here and I'm going to start applying it on the corners of the eye just right at the corner we're going to shade this color going inwards not pushing the color outwards it's just inwards right just blending that corner so just slightly again almost like a V here when we're doing the corners I'm blending that color but I'm not dragging it out too much I want to keep it contained now I'm going to take my brown eyeliner the bourgeois 16 hour eyeliner and we're going to kind of diagonally shade this liner and then using a fluffy shader brush and this is by Smashbox I'm just blending it into that socket okay from the Tati palette I'm going to take this again this red tone right here open and look down Sona and I'm going to introduce this in the crease again going back and forth not dragging it so much outwards but keeping to this piece area now I'm going to take a wipe and wipe around the eye to get rid of anything any fallout that's happened and now go into the inner corner with these two colors so I'm going to blend them on my brush the red and the brown and I'm just going to add this in the inner corner a little bit blend it so I'm just blending that with small circular motions in the inner corner and I'm going to use a clean air bud and just slightly blend that shadow out now I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to take some amber lights by MAC it's a gold shadow and highlight her brow bone with it corner with the same I'm going to go back in with a pencil brush and just blend this out a little bit I'm just going to wipe around this area
Now I'm going to take this Pat McGrath palette and I'm going to take the darker almost aubergine color here and I'm going to start shading in the corner of her eye with this. Keeping it again just to the corner and not dragging it out. And I'm dragging it slightly higher up here. So just creating that corner up and down almost like a V and just blending it both ends. I'm going to take the softer brown here and I'm going to blend that on top of where we added the aubergine color and kind of drag this out now a little bit. I'm going to take a fluffier brush, MAC eyeshadow blending brush and do the same with that again in the same area. So now I'm going to take this palette by Pat McGrath and I'm going to use the red here in this metallic red tone and I'm going to go straight into the center of her eye with this. Because this is more of an experimental bride, someone who wants to do something fun and with my background in MAC, um, we used to do a lot of color. So I think sometimes it's a lot of fun to do something that is different as opposed to the same old same. Because I feel now um, a lot of brides just tend to look like a blur of the same bride. So just creating that red. You can see that it's nice and red right there. Then I'm going to go back in with my Warm Obsessions palette and I'm going to take the darker color again, open Sona and look down and I'm just going to add that into the inner corner and blend it towards the eyeshadow we've just applied. So kind of darkening it, creating a halo. The outside edges here as well. Just with the same dark color and I'm going to use the more red color here in the palette and blend it in the crease I'm going to wipe her face again go in her waterline with some black track now but just in the waterline we're not going to drag it outside her eye because I want it to look more brown and not black and I'm just applying it inside her waterline to in intensify that waterline a little bit. So first I'm going to layer from the Vice palette by Urban Decay Grasshopper which is like a green look up in the lower lash line but I want a hint of color I don't want it to take over so it's just literally there almost the middle of her lower lash line is that color right and I'm going to layer Urban Decay's electric palette I'm going to layer Freak on top of that because her dupatta is between these two colors so on top of Grasshopper I'm layering Freak now I'm going to go back in with my brown eyeliner and create now a line, open and look down. So I'm creating more of a conventional line now that just kind of follows her line, um, the shape of her eye, open and look down and we're just going to drag it out. Right, so if you can see, it's starting to come together. We have a little bit of that green tone happening, reds happening. And I'm going to add a little bit of this shimmery kind of peachy color right on top of the red but not too much just a hint no vigorous kind of movements just pat and press 
So I'm gonna do now, I've done a few layers of this and I'm gonna go back in with my red and press some pigment on top. Open. So add this kind of shine to it, shimmer to it. I'm gonna take a smaller shader brush and go closer to the crease as well. I'm using the red shade right now. It's going closer to the crease also. So I'm going to take the black eyeshadow from this palette now and I'm going to shade that in a little bit in the corner as well. So open Sona, look down. Not too much. Again, I want to keep it quite brown but just top and bottom here I'm gonna add some black to intensify the edges and not blend them out keep them in the V here and then right on top of that I'm gonna take my NARS Cordura and take the more brown color here and start blending it outwards and slightly up on the crease like that and then outwards. This helps the black blend as well. I want it to have a more feline shape her entire eye. Now we're gonna wipe. Just taking the side of the wipe to create a sharp edge here. So now I'm going to take the Mohave palette and use the dark brown from it and dust it over where I've applied her eyeliner. So all over the eyeliner, just back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and kind of blend that eyeliner by applying a darker tone on top of it. I'm just going to cut the corners a bit and I'm going to cut one patch right from the front like this to fit her eye and to also make it comfortable. Sometimes putting the entire strip can be uncomfortable because it bangs against the corner of the eye and the eyes get watery and it's a mess. I'm going to let it dry a little bit and place it right where your, the client's or bride's own lashes are open. So if you see, nice and fluttery, it's kind of looking good. And I'm going to start blending it from the corner here to the middle of the crease. And then I'm going to drag it outwards a little bit as well. I'm going to go back in with my gold, kind of a dull gold shadow here. And I'm just going to drag this at the edge here outwards. It's going to help to blend anything that's happening around the edges of the eye. All right? I'm going to go back and cover that strip with brown. Just brush your finger on the lash to make sure none, is, or none of it has come. Now I'm going to go ahead and start wiping her face. Before we finish her eyes, I'm just going to let the eyeliner dry and things just settle on her eye. And I'm going to start wiping her face to start prepping for skin. Right, so all over with wherever we applied that moisturizer. Wipe close to the eye as well, just makes your life easier. Wiped everywhere. I'm going to take a tissue and dry her face. So this is a great product for anyone who has slightly oily skin around the T-zone. Combination skin, oily skin works really well with this. I'm going to just apply it on her nose. 
her cheek here, chin, and the middle of her forehead. Then I'm going to take the Pink Perfect Cream and I'm going to add a layer of this on her face as well. And because these are primers, make sure you're not rubbing it into the skin vigorously because then you don't allow them to set well. You should just wipe them on your face and not blend it, blend it in like you would a moisturizer. And this product is also great for that kind of dewiness to start happening on the skin. And if you see already, her skin is starting to kind of glow here. Now I'm going to take my medium beige tart shape tape and I've mixed it with my NW45 Pro Long Wear Concealer by MAC and I'm going to come in and start applying this mixture wherever I feel it's needed. So under her eyes, around her mouth a little bit here. And it's slightly darker as you can tell. but it's to neutralize all the dark shadows around her eye. Just using my smaller beauty blender to carefully go around that lower lash line. And I'm taking some and also applying it on her forehead. I'm going to add Born This Way light on top of this layer. So I'm going to take some of that on my palette, bounce my sponge on top of it and start layering that on top. So we are applying it everywhere where we did the color correction. So in the other video, you saw me do more intense kind of skin on her. So now it's going to be softer because we have a lot of intensity happening on her eye and it's going to be a little dramatic. So I want her foundation to read more softer. So I'm going to add Bobbi Brown Warm Ivory 1 and I'm going to mix a little bit of an NC40 Studio Fix in there. And I'm going to mix both of these together start with her chest and neck first. Doing this also makes it easier to see if the color is matching the skin tone. Just going to apply it here and then drag the color on the face as well. So I'm going to take my beauty blender now and start patting that into the skin. Just pat, pat, pat into the skin. Just pull your nose down like that. Stabbing around that nose. Wanna make sure. You're not leaving any patches. The same on the chest and neck. Just look up. So I'm just blending it and the motion is a lot of dabbing into the skin. Just gonna go to the sides of the temples here as well. Now I'm gonna take the medium sand tart shape tape and I'm gonna take the MAC 234 brush and I'm going to start blending this, the inner corner of her eye. And then also taking it high up to make sure that this inner corner is nice and blended. I'm going to take my beauty blender and now push this pigment in to her under eye and skin. The outer corners also I'm going close to the edge there. While the skin is slightly wet almost, I'm going to also bounce 
some highlighter right onto it so i'm going to take some of my soft and gentle by mac and i'm just going to bounce it on her face before we do another layer of um, foundation just a thin layer and what this does it is that it will make the shine come through from under the makeup as opposed to on top it's already looking nice and dewy and do the same thing on her nose a little bit of the chin a little bit on the edge of her nose so just showing you how I'm approaching her skin slightly differently this time around I'm going to take Fenty Beauty in 410 and I'm also going to buff some of that in her hollow of her cheek and under her jaw. Again, all of this, if you do while the skin is still slightly damp, it'll blend even better. So always blend the jaw, contour, lower into the neck area making sure this is nice and just going to drag it down a little bit accentuating a hollow here taking the Fenty Beauty Pro filter and I'm also shading the sides of her nose I'm going to come in from the crease right and I'm going to just blend that in with my beauty blender here just blending that before I come in with my born this way in light concealer I'm just going to take my beauty blender and I'm going to create a line of lightness in the center of her nose and her forehead I'm mixing Tarte Shape Tape Medium Sand with some Born This Way Light and I'm also going to go around her eyebrow and then again back in with my beauty blender making sure we've blending that nicely just blending that and I'm also going to take some of the same mixture on my P31 brush and also apply it directly under the area where we contoured Just going to blend this out a little bit more, the nose area where the dark meets the lighter concealer is where I'm kind of the, that line is where I'm dabbing the beauty blender to make sure it's nice and blended. And I'm going to take the Lancome Hypnos Mascara now in black, and I'm going to start brushing it on her top lashes and the where we put the fake lash right I'm also I point it like this straight when I'm trying to go into lashes it's easier to just go straight in like that but make sure your hand is steady and you don't poke the client in the eye because that can be very painful Now I'm going to come in and reapply the Freak Eyeshadow from the Urban Decay Electric Palette under the eye a little bit just to bump up that color and in the corners I'm going to apply Sketch and kind of blend that in a little bit more. I'm going to take some of this reddish color again now. Just apply that slightly 
in the outer corners here as well. And before we go ahead, I'm going to put her necklace on her. So I'm just going to pat this area with powder so no transferring happens on the jewelry. I'm going to also apply the same under her eye. So I'm going to kind of leave it here. So now we're going to apply her necklace. So put that on and I'm just going to take a Real Techniques Duo Fiber Contour Brush and I'm going to brush that the rest of that powder off her under eye and T-zone area. I'm going to come back in with my Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. I'm going to add a layer of that to her top a little bit. And then work on her bottom lashes. And I feel especially when you do a colored waterline, it's nice to kind of cover it with a nice thick application of mascara so it kind of peeks through the lashes but isn't like so stark so this comes and kind of makes it seem more subtle even though subtle is not what we're going with with this look but i do like a little hint of color in the inner corners lower lash line if it's done correctly it can look a lot of fun and very modern but i'm dead against by the way a lot of times people want me to match their colors and I mean, I feel that this color, this green is a little bit in her jewelry and her, one of her dubattas. But I like that it's not the main color on her eye like that. So a little hint I prefer. And I'm going to create strokes that kind of go slightly up because I want to brush the eyebrow up with the spray. So just going to make some hair like strokes in the front. Fill in just the corner of her brows. And now I'm going to take a hairspray. I'm using the Osa Stronghold hairspray. And I'm just going to brush these up a little bit. But not too much because she has a thick brow. But enough to kind of just make the front hair kind of stand up. See the bushiness of the brow will work with this look. And then I'm going to take my Ben Nye pencil in mahogany and start shaping her lips. So just look this way a little bit and stretch your lips on her. I'm going to follow the line of her lip. And I'm using a deeper brownish kind of color on her lip to layer that all over her lip contour before we go in with our nude color. That also adds an interesting depth to the way the lip color looks. So I'm just adding that all over the sides of her lip like this. So now I'm going to go in with Girl Strip by Huda Beauty and I'm going to apply that as the first color on her lip. And then I'm going to take some of my Mahogany Lip Pencil by MAC. Stretch here and I'm going to shade that into the lip as well. So I'm going to keep it to the outer corners first and then drag it in a little bit. So shading the outer corner with these different pencils again just adds to the depth. Don't worry about the edges, we're going to clean them. So I'm going to take Kinda Sexy by MAC, 
stretch and then apply it in the center of her lip. Start shading it on top of the darker lip pencil we applied. I'm going to apply some Fenty Unbutton color on top of that. Just painting that all over her lip. Before I start cleaning my edges, I'm going to go in with my medium sand now and start cleaning the edges of her lip. Now I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm just going to blend it on top of a crease. Just making sure everything is nice and blended. This has no product on it. It is a clean blending brush. Just blending that ever so gently. And I'm going to just bounce that a little bit in the center of her lip with this 234 brush. Gently to just create a nice effect there. I love using my shadows as highlights on the lip as well. I think it end up looking very pretty. So now I'm going to use the Orgasm Blush by NARS. Smile. I'm also going to layer some Chic Freak by Fenty Beauty on top of that. So smile again. But I'm going to keep it more towards here, guys. Because remember, we want to make sure that we don't highlight the fact that Sona has slightly larger pores around her cheeks. So we want to keep it on the outside edge like that. I'm going to go straight in with my beauty blender and smile again. I'm going to hit that area just on her cheek. I'm going to add some more Sweet On You Blush by Sephora. Smile. Just applying it to the apples of her cheek now. So I'm just going to go ahead and brush her eyebrows up one more time. Just going to use some more of my eyebrow pencil to fill in the gaps slightly here a little more. I'm going to take some nylon eyeshadow by MAC on my pencil brush and just highlight that inner corner a little bit more. So I'm just going to take my NARS Laguna now, bronzer, and I'm just going to intensify her cheek bronzer a little bit. And I'm then going to go in with my eyeliner one last time and apply one more coat of that to finish off. Wipe around the lash. Just going in with some additional mascara in her lower lash line. We've done something slightly more experimental with the fact that her, not her lip is matching her eye, but we've used like the tones that are on her outfit on her eyes. So we've done like a burgundy red eye with a green accent. The lip is nice and kind of nudey, but with a gold accent. The skin looks nice and dewy. We have that shine happening and it looks like a fun look with the hair and the jewelry. Hope you guys learned something and see you for the next tutorial.